And a happy Tuesday to North Central Washington. Happy Tuesday to everybody out there in the Wenatchee Valley who are enjoying this very program fresh out of the box on this Tuesday, the 19th day of December 2017. This is Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. I'm Dan Kuntz, your host, News Director Steve Hare. To my immediate left, Cat in the control room, Alex Haley in the green room. Good morning. Ooh, a little bit of flurry this morning. Up at, up at your lip, not down to my head, please. Yeah, it was just kind of Driving raining. into town this morning, uh, coming across the bridge, I had some snow flakes hitting the front windshield, so... Yeah, yeah. It's It'll all be gone by well, noon. Well, I'm sure it will. Yeah, but unfortunately. Uh, still hoping for a white Christmas. It's, it's not going to happen, at least not here on the valley floor. If you go up to the mountains, you got no problems. If you head up to Medhow or Leavenworth, maybe a little bit of white Christmas. But here in the Wenatchee Valley, yeah, it's, it doesn't look good. I had a little skiff of snow outside my house this morning up above Costco in East mm -hmm. Wenatchee, so it may be a little slick heading down the hill this morning, folks. So. Take it easy. I had a very easy commute. I walked about 125 feet. It was yeah. much easier than most people have. I love my morning commute. Great show for you today. We hope. We're keeping our fingers crossed. Normally, uh, Tuesdays, we don't do a very good show. It's kind of in our contract. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, the folks at B have decided that we really need to start getting our act together, Steve. So. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Steve's got a lot of news to get to. It was a busy day. Boy, oh boy. Uh, yesterday, we were in the middle of our, our weekly staff meeting, when all of a sudden everybody's phone started going bling, 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 yeah. with the train derailment in the uh, uh, DuPont area in Seattle. Uh, it's just south of uh, Tacoma. It's still a mess down there, too, yeah. folks. If you have any plans to drive to the west side today, I-5 remains closed at this point in time in the DuPont area. Yeah, you can uh, you can go north, you can't go south is the last I checked. North is like one lane and their flagger control, south is completely closed. Yeah, and the alternate routes are pretty limited too, pretty since bad, it's yeah. uh, right there at JBLM. Mm -hmm. Not a good thing, not a good thing. 80 miles an hour in a 30 mile an hour zone is where they're supposed to be going and they were going 80. Ugh. It's terrible, terrible. Uh, anyway, uh, we got your weather forecast uh, to pass along to you. We got your past report to pass along to you. There's a nice little pun. Uh, sports, Steve, of course, has the news. We have the obscure holiday birthdays today in history. Alex Haley from Laugh Productions will be joining us in the second half of the program. He's got a comedy series coming to the America Pack this winter. It's going to oh, be pretty fun. cool. We'll talk about that. We'll show us some clips from uh, one of the comedians uh, that are coming. And one of the ads that he starred in or was a part of for the Schlein County PUD won an award. Uh, uh, for marketing. We'll show that ad as well. We'll have a great conversation with Alex. That's the second half of the show. Um, yesterday at this time when we took you around the valley, our cross camera or camera that we begin our tour uh, was not working. Is it working today? I don't think it is. Let's find out. It is a little bit according to Caleb. Well, let's find out what we get. Let's go around the valley and see what exactly works. Oh, there you go. Morning. See, it's a beautiful morning. That is the cross cam. I mean, we, we really are supposed to do it whether we can see it or not. There's no, pro no power outage right now that I know. No, of. it's just, it, it's it's, it's the, the weather. weather. It's the weather. Uh, it's cold and dank and damp, and that's what it is. It's just the weather. That's all there is to it. So, yeah, Wenatchee's down there. We're, we're there. Trust me on that. Let's go to camera two. Maybe we'll get a better view. Oh, see, now that's much yeah, better. Very fun. That's, that's number one canyon. That's Fifth Street. That's about the only thing you can see there is uh, Fifth Street of number one canyon. All of these, of course, courtesy of local hotel Sky Fi High Speed Wireless. Uh, internet, so you can get super scrimming fast internet, Steve, to your house. You don't have to have fiber. Dank and dreary day today. Yeah, it's kind of it's, it's a it's, London fog. It's commercial. a London fog. It's going to rain, by the way, most of the day today. <laughs> Details are coming up with snow in the mountain passes. Mountain passes have a winter storm warning going on right Ooh, now. They're getting hammered up there. Yeah, they are. Camera three is ugh, I, don't, I don't know what. Oh, that's that's a uh, Cougar Ridge. That's Cougar Ridge. You can barely make out, Steve, the intersection of Sunset Highway and the Otobashian Bridge there. There's the and traffic the coming across the river. Yep, it is. I had no idea it was that dark out. Of course, we're also getting to the point where these last couple of days, 19th, 20th, 21st, are the shortest days of the year. Winter solstice is on Thursday, and then we get longer daylight, in theory, anyway. And finally, camera four. <laughs> and that is, uh, that's got to be Billy Goat. No, Tumwater. Uh, Oh, is that Tumwater? Yeah, unless oh, the trees up in Billy Goat have yeah, come back. I, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's Tumwater. Leavenworth, good morning. Thanks for joining us. I had no idea it was that. It, you know, I guess I didn't notice that it was that dark and dank out. Oh boy, here in the Wenatchee Valley. Well, well one, of our, one of our coworkers system. sent us some pictures down from the plane area this yeah. morning. So they're getting a nice, nice little dose of snow. Up yeah, there. they're, they're going to have a white Christmas yeah. in plane of that. There's no doubt about it. Snow level is going to go up to about 3,500 feet today. At, when you get to that 3,500 foot mark and above that, it is going to snow and snow quite hard in the mountain passes. Here in the Wenatchee Valley proper, let's take a look at your forecast from the National Weather Service. Rain today, <laughs> quarter of an inch possible, Steve. 
quarter of an inch. Yeah, there's Santa. Good to see Santa there on Monday. A uh, quarter of an inch of rain possible today. That's quite a bit of rain for us, mm -hmm. Steve. High of about 40, which is just about what we hit yesterday. Just a slight chance of some light snow showers tonight. Uh, about a 20% chance of light snow tonight, overnight low of about 30. And then uh, we get some sunshine Wednesday and then a big bunch of cold Arctic air. The jet stream is going to go way up to Alaska, going to grab a bunch of Arctic air. It's going to send it right down to the Pacific Northwest, which means look at the high and Saturday and Sunday. nighttime lows, too. Wow. Yeah, going to get cold. Sub-freezing. The trade-off, of course, is sunshine. We're going to have quite a bit of sunshine, uh, but it's going to be cold. Not very, much very heat chilly. recovery, though. No, none whatsoever. Uh, so there's going to be a big blast of Arctic air, dry, cold and dry Arctic air going to come down that begins on Friday and lasts right through uh, the weekend. So there you go, cold and dry weather for the Christmas holiday. Proper rain today, sunshine Wednesday is a transition day, Thursday, Thursday night you see a couple of snowflakes, don't bet on it, <clears throat> I don't think it's going to happen. Um, and then, then we start cooling down and drying out, so there you go. Uh, we, I think we have, do we have a couple more uh, uh, items to show to maybe show, there you go. There's your winter storm warnings and watches. And you see that little pink sliver down there by little old Wenatchee Town, USA. It just misses us. We're in that shadow. Yeah, we're in that shadow. Mission Ridge is going to get a lot of snow. They could use it. The mountains are going to get lots of snow. The Idaho Panhandle is going to get lots of snow. Spokane got hammered so here Spokane the last got couple of days. Spokane got seven inches so of snow a couple of days ago. Passed right over us and into the basin and yep. beyond. And there's your snow level. So you can see Fort Wenatchee proper, nothing, zero. But uh, you just go to like Plain, they're going to get four or five inches. Leavenworth's going to get a few inches. You go north up to the Medhow Valley, they're going to get uh, quite Ooh, a bit of snow. Davenport, that area, Republic, yeah, they're going to get quite a bit of snow. But not us, not us at all. Now the mountain passes, on the other hand, good golly, Miss Molly. Chains required right now on Snoqualmie Pass. It is snowing to beat the band up there. And so unless you have an all-wheel drive vehicle, it is a chain requirement to get over I-90 with snow and slush on the runway. It's snowing and it's going to snow all day today on I-90. Believe it or not, Stevens is better than I-90. It usually doesn't happen, but that's the case here. Traction tires advised on Stevens, although it is snowing hard with bad visibility, compact snow and ice on the runway. They just have a traction tire advisory on Stevens and on Blue Pass. It is snowing up there. Compact snow on the roadway. Traction tires are advised. So advisory is posted for Blewett and Stevens. Chains required on I-90 unless you have an all-wheel drive vehicle. Winter storm warning remains in effect for the mountain passes until 10 o'clock tonight. Snow level just about 3,000 feet, Steve. 3,000 is what they say. So new snow accumulations today, 6 to 10 inches yeah. in the mountain passes, and then an additional 3 to 5 inches tonight, and then that winter storm warning will expire. Tonight, Wednesday, they start drying out. I think beginning Wednesday night and lasting all through Christmas holiday, no snow in the forecast. So they're going to get a lot of snow now and a lot of snow tonight, and then that's it. But then we've got the cold temperatures, cold temperatures. so they should be able to retain that snow uh, depth. And uh, for the that's great path, news, yeah. of course, yeah. for Christmas for those skiers. If Absolutely. And the best them. news is because it's going to stop snowing Wednesday night and not snow for five or six days, the plows will be able to get the job done. So it looks like if you're driving over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house, for the holidays, it looks like the passes will be just fine mm -hmm. once we get to Friday and Saturday and Sunday because there's no snow and the plows can get ahead of the game a little bit. Merry so, Christmas. Yeah. I, I still want a white Christmas. I just may have to make one of my own. Well, we'll send you up to Plain. There you go. I'll How's go that? up to Plain. I, I love Plain. It's a beautiful area up there. <laughs> hey, but it's after the hour. You're watching Mike Wenatchee Valley. We are live here from Studio 10 in downtown Wenatchee. In one minute, keep your fingers crossed, Steve Hare. We'll have your Tuesday morning news on Wake Up in Anchor Valley on the NCW Life Channel. When the time comes to propose, when you want to celebrate a birthday or an anniversary, when you want to mark a special milestone in someone's life, Clark's Jewelry has been providing quality jewelry at a fair price since 1977. Diamonds, gemstones, watches, necklaces, earrings, rings. Their professional staff will take the time and care to help you find the perfect piece of jewelry. Clark's Jewelry. Always quality jewelry at a fair price. This is the NCW Life Community Calendar brought to you by Localtel. Old time radio show It's a Wonderful Life is happening Thursday, December 21. Become a part of the live studio audience at 7.30 p.m. at the Numerica Performing Arts Center. The Leavenworth Nazarene Church presents their Living Nativity December 22 to 24 from 7 to 9 p.m. This free reenactment is narrated, has live animals, and a cast of characters. For more information, visit ncwlife.com. And now it's time for your local news update 
with Steve Hare. Well, good morning and welcome back to Wake Up Wenatchee Valley for this, uh, what is it, 23rd day of... Uh, it's the 19th, Steve. Beg your pardon. <laughs> Steve skipped ahead apparently to Christmas Eve. I'm in the Christmas mood this okay. morning. Anyway, here's what's happening in the news. Major catastrophe, South Sound. The commute this morning is going to be just a total mess, as you can see here from this image provided to us by the Washington State Patrol. They're in the DuPont area, I-5. State Patrol confirms now that three people were killed Monday morning when an Amtrak train derailed over southbound I-5. Now, much of the wreckage still being cleared, including train cars laying across southbound I-5 and blocking all traffic. WSP uh, also reports 100 more people were taken to hospitals. The entire uh, train uh, consisted of 12 cars and two engines. Uh, two semi trucks and five vehicles were also involved in the crash on I 5. Now, according to Amtrak, there were approximately 77 passengers and seven crew members on board. Pierce County Sheriff's Detective Ed Troyer said there were no fatalities among the vehicles involved in that crash, but there are injuries. Again, state troopers say southbound I-5 will remain closed until further notice. They're hoping to have that cleared at least uh, later this morning. Well, police continue their search for the driver of the car that was involved in an injury hit and run crash. This happened Friday evening on uh, Wenatchee's south side. Captain Edgar Reinfeld with the police department says a pedestrian was injured while in the crosswalk at the intersection of Mission and Ferry Streets. The pedestrian suffered some injuries, uh, thankfully nothing critical, and the driver in a uh, red Ford Mustang pulled him to the 7-Eleven parking lot, got out of the vehicle and ran. Uh, there was a passenger in the vehicle that also fled and neither one of them were uh, able to be contacted. The victim suffered broken bones, though nothing uh, terribly severe. Uh, the victim was a uh, Sean Goldie of Wenatchee. He's 47 years old. Uh, the driver is still unknown. We have identified some suspects and multiple witnesses thankfully came forward trying to identify him, but we do not have probable cause for arrest on anyone at this time. And Captain Reinfeld went on to say that uh, witnesses are encouraged to come forward with any information they might have. In fact, you can call Rivercom at 663-9911 if you'd like to share any inform information regarding that crash. Meanwhile, the Trump administration has put a halt to plans to recover grizzly bears in the North Cascades. National Park Superintendent Karen Goodrich, uh, Karen Taylor Goodrich, rather, told the Interagency Grizzly Bear Committee last week that her staff had been ordered to stop work on its environmental impact statement by Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke's office. Meanwhile, the order also extends to ongoing talks with Canadian officials who are involved in similar recovery plans in British Columbia. Taylor Goodrich said the agency was in the process of reviewing public comments on the draft environmental impact statement. She said they had received over 127,000 comments. Now, the North Cascades ecosystem is comprised of the National Park, also large swaths of the Mount Baker, Snoqualmie, and Okanagan Wenatchee National Forests, totaling over 9,800 square miles. It holds an estimated five to 10 grizzly bears. Canadian portion supports another six grizzlies. Also in our news today, Link Transit is about to launch a mobile ticketing app in partnership with Token Transit, and that's going to give customers a new and cashless fare payment option. NCW Live's Grant Olson has more on that story. The Token Transit application will allow customers to purchase and activate Link Transit passes using their smartphones before boarding the bus. All fare types are available on this platform, including individual ride tickets, day passes, and a rolling 31-day pass. For paratransit riders, they can purchase single ride tickets and 10 ride punch cards. Around 50% of Link Transit customers still pay fares by depositing cash into the fare box as opposed to using prepaid forms of payment. A cashless fare transaction takes four to five seconds to conduct when boarding, whereas depositing cash in the fare box takes about 22 seconds. In order to improve trip adherence to schedules, Link Transit has rolled out a new solution to provide customers a 
another option to pay fares and reduce cash payments. Over half of Link Transit customers own a smartphone and a system for easy mobile payment that creates accessibility for everyone. With more accessibility, Link Transit hopes to attract and engage with new customers who might not ordinarily choose public transit as a means of mobility. For more information about the Token Transit app and a download link, visit www.linktransit.com. Grant Olson, NCW Life News. Also today, thieves continue to target those who shop online. Eric Granstrom has that report. An East Wenatchee woman has caught a porch pilfering package thief on camera and would like your help to find the man. Monica Roberts says she was contacted by Amazon that her package had been delivered to the front porch you see right behind me. But when she checked, the package wasn't there. That's when Monica turned to her surveillance cameras and watched the tape. Local law enforcement authorities are reminding those who shop online to make sure there's someone to sign for the package when it arrives to your home, or better yet, maybe even have it sent to your work if your boss will let you. I guess for us, it's, it's, you know, try to make arrangements of one it, that you're there or a family member or a friend can be there um, for delivery or, you know, try to make it so where the they don't deliver it unless, you know, they actually have someone in person or try to find a different drop place. And I guess that's the biggest piece of it is so much online shopping is, is part of our society nowadays. And, and there, unfortunately, there's people out there that will continue to victimize uh, many, many people and take advantage of those situations, um, especially coming into the holiday season. In Monica's case, police are looking for a white male in his late 20s to early 30s driving a white and gray Subaru four-door with a spoiler on the back. So with the holidays here and so many deliveries coming either through the chimney or on your porch, make sure that the thieves don't spoil your Christmas fun. In East Wenatchee, I'm Eric Grandstrom on the NCW Life Channel. Well, I know a lot of fun that some kids are going to have here in the Wenatchee Valley as a result of the huge Christmas toy drive. In fact, the Les Schwab Community Toy Drive wrapped up last night. Final distribution of the toys to local charities, making sure less fortunate kids have something to unwrap this holiday. Eric Grandstrom has a story that began three years ago with a conversation between Brent Rhodes of KKRV Radio and Les Schwab Area Manager Kurt Moser. Brent Rhodes and I started talking about doing a community toy drive. Uh, they had some participation with the Bruce House in the past, and, and we wanted to find ways to, to expand it. And afterwards, he said, you know what, this is all nice, but I'm talking about grand scale. And I had suspected at one point that Kurt was a little off center. <laughs> and so when we started talking about this larger scale thing, I came away from that conversation convinced that he was off, off his rocker. We brought in uh, Sangsters. Uh, we brought in... Uh, Katie from Works Gym. We've brought in NCW Life, who's probably been one of the greatest partners in this deal as far as getting us out in front of the community uh, through TV, through social media, and uh, you know our, our kid shoppers and all that, just a couple of the projects that we've had. But the first thing we had to do is find uh, organizations to be recipients. And uh, so we, uh, we found some really, really good organizations that we felt very comfortable with that uh, that share really good value. Many of the families that uh, we are honored to serve are facing a different kind of decision. They're, they're facing a decision to provide Christmas for their children or to put food on the table or to pay rent uh, or to pay the electric bill. And uh, to be able to come together as a community and extend that level of dignity uh, and honor uh, to these families and give them the opportunity to celebrate with their family in their homes uh, Christmas is truly an amazing blessing. We always struggle this time of year being able to fill that and fill all the wishes and this has come about and it's been such a blessing. Well believe it or not we're to the final stage here of the distribution for the Les Schwab Community Toy Drive for 2017. We've got Mike McCarty here with the Les Schwab and we have Lisa Abel with the Bruce House and Women's Resource Center. Lisa this has been quite an interesting month. Um, tell us about 
how this is going to work for your organization and what all of these toys mean to the kids. Wow, I wasn't <laughs> expecting all that. <laughs> well, this has really meant a lot to us and very humbling for me because this is my first go around yeah. with this and I'm even getting the chills talking about it. So, <laughs> Well, and it's been a, a chills for all of us that have been involved with this. And, and Mike, I know that uh, this has been a special event for you too. Yeah, special for, for Les Schwab Tire Centers and also for you know our supporters with the NCW Life, KKRV, Wenatchee Wild, Sangster Motors. We, we've had a great network of, network of people to really help out the children in this community, and, and we're so proud to be part of that. We are so proud. We've had tens of thousands of dollars of cash donations. We've had thousands of toys to, to be able to go out to hundreds of kids to help make sure that they have something to unwrap for this Christmas. And before you know it, we'll be working on the Les Schwab Community Toy Drive for 2018. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas, and uh, thank you to everybody who donated to make this all happen. Thank you, Eric, for that and all the work that you and Brent have done on that uh, that big project. And uh, tell you what, Dan, that's what Christmas is all about. Mm. And all as you as you mentioned, uh, for all the people who were organizing this, and you have no idea how many man hours went into the actual mm. putting this together, making everything happen. Uh, to all of those people who made it happen, and specifically to Les Schwab, kudos to those guys. Now they can all go. Whew, because yeah. it's been a it's been a whirlwind the last 20 days of oh this. yeah yeah so. a lot of planning went into that a lot of <coughs> a lot of uh, of uh, what shoe leather has yeah. been uh, worn out as a result of that as well so a resounding success when you ever do something for the first time and you don't really know if it's going to work you keep your fingers crossed and it worked and batteries <coughs> folks are they included that's yeah, right. batteries <laughs> <coughs> Everything is battery operated now. Uh, Even this tree in front of me is battery operated. Including us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm running on a couple of D's right now. <laughs> uh, at the bottom of your screen, you can see all the different ways you can get a hold of us. There are any number of ways you can do it. You can email us directly. You can Facebook message us, which has become very popular. You can pick up the telephone and give us a call. If you go to our website, ncwlife.com, you'll see the contact us button, and you can click on that as well. In fact, that's how we got that story about the uh, pilfered Christmas gifts. That came to us as a message on our Facebook page. So folks make use of it. Absolutely. We'd love to hear from you. This mm -hmm. is as much your station as it is ours. And who's kidding who? It's barely ours. That's right. <laughs> the news with Grant Olson comes your way at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock. 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock. The news with uh, Grant Olson. And don't forget, we have live sports tonight. We have wrestling. Uh, Eastmont travels across the river to take on the Bonacci Panthers. We'll have wrestling tonight live and we at 7 o'clock. We are your cure for net neutrality. How's that? Are we? <laughs> I don't know. I think we just got in trouble. Oh, we're kidding. <laughs> it is 22 minutes after the hour. Going to take a quick break. Steve's going to go back to work. He's going to visit with Alex. Check in with Alex. Make sure he didn't run off. Alex Haley, my guest in the second half of the show. Then I'll come back with sports, the obscure holiday. Today in history, birthdays, and we'll profile our local business of the day today during this holiday season. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley live from Studio 4 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Life Channel. Having a relationship with your pediatrician is so important. Feeling that sense of trust, that is priceless. I tell everybody about CBCH. I love it there. When I make an appointment, I don't have to take an entire day off. As a working mom, my life is really busy. Family time is everything. That's what we all work towards. And I feel like CBCH respects that. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Channel. I'm Eric Grandstrom with NCW Life Sports. I'm NCW Life News Director Steve Hess. Catch us on Local Tell Channel 12. You can watch us on Charter Channel 19 or stream us live on ncwlife.com. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Where we cover the local high schools, the Wenatchee Wild, and the pro teams out of Seattle. On Saturday, we have a 90% chance of rain. Catch it all right here on the NCW Life Channel. Twenty-four minutes after the hour, thirty-one degrees, some light snow, quite a bit of fog, and a little bit of rain coming down outside of our studios in downtown Wenatchee. It will change to all rain. We're going to get quite a bit of rain most of the day today, with heavy snow for the three thousand foot level and above. Let's do sports on this Tuesday morning. Les Schwab prep scoreboard from Monday: The Wenatchee Panthers hosted the Moses Lake Chiefs at East Mont Lanes, and they eked out a one hundred and seventeen pin victory. High bowlers for the Panthers: Jessica Holbrook bowled a two hundred one. Taylor Bitterman. 
Bowled a 199. Hannah Johnson bowled a 182 and a 176. And Kayla Hankins with a 169. Wenatchee is off until after the new year. They'll take on Eisenhower on January 4th. Also in basketball, as you see there, Waterville Mansfield all over Republic 56 to 9. That's your Les Schwab prep scoreboard of what happened. Now here's what's going to happen today in basketball. Okanagan is at Cascade for a girls boys doubleheader that begins at 545. There's a double dual wrestling match with Quincy, Lake Roosevelt and Cascade. That all takes place at Tenasket at 430. Also in wrestling, Chelan, Cashmere and Omak are at Okanagan 6 o'clock tonight. And here on the NCW Live channel, Eastmont wrestles at Wenatchee. We will have it live right here on this very station. Eric Grandstrom and his dad, Dave, will be calling the action. Looking forward to that at 7 o'clock tonight right here on this very TV station. Today starts four days of basketball at the Town Toyota Center. A college game takes center stage tonight. Central Washington University takes on Northwest Nazarene with a big alumni pregame event that begins at 5.15 at the Top Shelf Lounge. And then the game will tip off at 7. Braden DeGruy was on this show about a month ago to talk about the event. I've been proposing this to Central for four to five years now to try to get them to bring a game and have it in Wenatchee. And I've been working with the athletic director over there, the foundation board, the president of the college. And every year, it's hard to schedule a game at the Town Toyota Center because we have to wait on the And I've been working with the athletic director over there, the foundation board, the president of the college. And every year, it's hard to schedule a game at the Town Toyota Center because we have to wait on the, the wild schedule. Mm -hmm. and, and that doesn't come out until July. Right. Right. So it's been really, really hard for us because in the GNAC, at the conference that Central is in, we have to have all the games lined up. I mean, our games are lined up for next year already. So it's just been really difficult. So a lot of the games we've been getting is, you know, a team out of Canada, Quest, right? Or Longera or Walla Walla College, you know, a division small, small, division three school. And, and I didn't want that. I wanted a, a good league conference game that would be a really, really good draw. And so that it would just be a good basketball game. Yeah, it's going to be very good. Check it out tonight at the Town Toyota Center, Central Washington University, driving up from Ellensburg to take on Northwest Nazarene. So that's college, and then high school teams take over beginning tomorrow for the North Central Washington Basketball Showcase, presented by Giza Credit Union. There's your schedule, and if you can't read it, I'll read it for you. The Cashmere Girls take on Chelan at 6, followed by the boys at 7.30. Then on Thursday, the first of six games tips off at 11 a.m. That's when Eisenhower will take on Bethel. That's followed at 1 by the Moses Lake and Linwood boys. We'll have Wenatchee and University girls live at 3, followed by the boys at 5. We'll tape the Eastmont and Rogers in girls play at 7, and the boys action at 9. And then Friday, they wrap it up with six more games highlighted by Wenatchee and Eastmont, the girls at 7, and the boys at 9. It is 28 minutes after the hour. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. And we're live here from Studio 2 in downtown Wenatchee. It is December 19th, and the obscure holiday is oatmeal Muffin Day. A lot of my obscure holidays have a tendency to be food related. I wonder if you've caught on to that. But this is, a, this is one of the few foods that not only tastes good, but is healthy for you. At least I like oatmeal muffins. Now I kind of offset the healthy benefits of oatmeal muffins by slathering it in butter, but that's my problem. Uh, that's my problem, not yours. Uh, you would think that this day was steeped in tradition. There's a big, big reason why December 19th is always Oatmeal Muffin Day. Of I don't know why it's Oatmeal Muffin Day, it just is. I found it online. And of course, if you find it on the internet, you know it's true. Oatmeal muffins, lower your cholesterol. Uh, counterbalance all the, the stuff you're going to eat over the next week or so for the Christmas holidays by scarfing down the occasional oatmeal muffin. And besides, it sits down there in your stomach and you're not hungry for a while. Oatmeal Muffin Day, always celebrated on December 19th. It is December 19th. And let's do today in history. 240 years ago, General George Washington's Continental Army headed to Valley Forge and said, okay, we're going to camp here for the winter. That was where they had their winter quarters. This happened on the state in 1777, 240 years ago, and it did not go well. You name it, and it happened. Typhoid, typhus, smallpox, dysentery, pneumonia, malnutrition. Uh, it was bitterly cold and nasty temperatures, and the, the, the huts that they were staying in weren't exactly the healthiest thing, and by, 17, by February 1778, just in just three short months, 2,500 American soldiers died at Valley Forge, but they got through it. They survived, and because of that, the, the Revolutionary War kind of turned 
a little bit, but it was on this date that George Washington's Continental Army uh, set up winter quarters at Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. 60 years ago today, today is the 60th anniversary of the day Elvis got that little letter in the mail. Merry, happy Christmas, Elvis. Here you go, happy holidays. By the way, this is the United States Army and we're gonna draft you. Yes, Elvis Presley has served his draft notice by the United States Army on this date in 1957, 60 years ago today. He got a four month deferment so he could star in the film King Creole, which was good because it's about the best film Elvis ever made. The Army wanted to put Elvis in special services. They said it'd be easy, you do six weeks of basic training and then you just go back to your regular life and a couple of times uh, we'll call you up and you come and perform for the troops and that's all you gotta do. But Colonel Tom Potter said there's no way my boy Elvis is gonna play for free for anybody. So Elvis during his year and a half in the Army I was just a regular, good old-fashioned American soldier. Elvis Presley got his draft notice on this date 60 years ago today. And 34 years ago today, it was on uh, December 19th, 1983, the original World Cup trophy, the original FIFA World Cup trophy, the Jules Rome trophy, was stolen from the headquarters of the Brazilian Football Confederation in Rio de Janeiro. It was very, very valuable, very, very important. It was under the permanent possession of this group. They put it in a bulletproof case, a glass case with bulletproof glass so nobody could steal it. So the, three, the thieves actually used a crowbar and they pried open the back of the case and made off with the trophy. The trophy was never recovered, by the way. <clears throat> it was consumed. Most people widely believe that they actually melted down the trophy and sold it. But the original World Cup trophy went missing on the state 34 years ago today and it's never been found. And at 31 minutes after the hour, a couple of uh, historic birthdays to pass along to you today. Leonid Brezhnev, everybody's favorite Soviet premier. There he is. Leonid Brezhnev was born in the state in 1906, died at the age of 75 in 1982. He was the Soviet premier during my youth. Uh, Nikita Khrushchev was, was not quite of my time. Leonid Brezhnev was the guy. Look at those eyebrows. I thought I had eyebrows. That guy had eyebrows. He was actually a, an engineer by trade and worked his way up to the Politburo and from 1964 1982, he ran the Soviet Union during the height of the Cold War. And Maurice White, we miss this guy, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Of course, he passed away last year of Parkinson's disease at the age of 74. Songwriter, musician, band leader, producer, arranger, he did it all at Earth, Wind, and Fire. He was essentially responsible for, for the group's success. He won seven Grammy Awards, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Songwriters Hall of Fame, Vocal Group Hall of Fame, the great Maurice White, the leader of Earth, Wind, and Fire, was born in the state in 1941. One more item of business to get to before we take a quick break and find out what's on Mike McNaughty's mind, and that's to talk about another local business. And I want to talk today about Chris Kringle. It's always Christmas year round at Chris Kringle. Of course, Chris Kringle, uh, you walk in Chris Kringle and you boom, you're in the Christmas spirit. That's all you got to do. Just walk in and you're just going to get overwhelmed with everything Christmas, including, of course, ornaments from Christopher Radko. Uh, whimsical stuff from Mark Roberts. Chris Kringle has the largest selection of Department 56 in Central Washington. It's huge. It's Christmas year-round at Chris Kringle and custom-made ornaments. How's that for a gift? Ornaments that are custom-made you can't find anyplace else. They'll do it for you at Chris Kringle. Chris Kringle, Chris Kringle beautiful Front Street in downtown Leavenworth. Shop local this holiday season. 33 minutes after the hour, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, everyone is entitled to Mike McNaughty's opinion. Then Alex Haley from Laugh Productions will be joining me to talk about the big comedy series coming to the Numerica Pack beginning next month. All of that coming up. You're watching Wake Up in Anche Valley live here from Studio 8 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Live channel. At DA Davidson in Wenatchee, we provide financial services for independent-minded clients working to secure their future. Whether it's helping to construct your personal financial, retirement, or estate plan, we start with a disciplined approach and straightforward advice. Our look you in the eye attentiveness that our clients demand and get is rooted in values that are as human as a handshake. D. Davidson's straightforward approach is the way we've done it for 80 years.
Quality, comfort, style, service. This is the Crown Furniture Difference for more than 50 years. Their commitment to you is to provide the best furniture and mattresses the industry has to offer at a great price. Shop Crown Furniture today to experience the difference. And remember, free setup delivery in Holloway in their service area is just another way they show they care. Stoke is a series that highlights a variety of outdoor adventure sports that are available in the Pacific Northwest. I dedicate my time to enjoying this natural playground. The decision is yours. How will you keep your Stoke? Just because it's cold outside doesn't mean your golf game has to go cold. Keep your swing in midsummer shape all winter long with the Golf Simulator at the Golfer's Edge. PGA Golf Professional Ed Payne can help you fine tune your swing or overhaul your clubs. And for the golfer on your Christmas list, a Golfer's Edge gift card is a great fit. New clubs, new shoes, new clothes from Tanya's Corner and time on the Golf Simulator. Hey, it's all at the Golfer's Edge on mission between Kittitas and Yakima. Hey, this is Mike Mad Dog Magnotti, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. I was a former police officer. People sometimes ask me about owning a handgun. Well, you know, I'm a Second Amendment guy who believes the Bill of Rights specifically gives us Americans the right to own firearms. But I tell people that unless you're willing to take the time to not only learn about the firearm safety, but also take proper firearm safety lessons and then arrange for proper lock storage security for your guns in your home, you shouldn't even consider owning a firearm. Well, I agree. The guns don't kill people any more than spoons and forks make people fat. It is irresponsible gun owners who are all too often the cause of firearms deaths. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnotti, and that's my opinion. Hi, this is Carl. And Kathy from East Wenatchee Grocery Outlet. We are excited to be a part of this wonderful community and look forward to meeting you at East Wenatchee Grocery Outlet. Our store is filled with name brand products at bargain prices at 40 to 60% savings. We have a large selection of natural, organic, and specialty foods. Stop by and meet Carl, the wine guy, on Wednesday. East Wenatchee Grocery Outlet, where you can win what you save. Stop by soon. Christmas is charming. Christmas is Santa Claus. Christmas is collectible. Christmas is whimsical. Capture Christmas at Kris Kringle. Join us for Street Talk and Other Stuff with Mike Magnotti on the NCW Life Channel. This former police sergeant is plugged into not only the world of the streets, he's an actor and connoisseur of the arts. So join Mike and his guests for, well, Street Talk and Other Stuff. Mondays at 10 a.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 p.m. and Wednesdays at 5.30. It's Street Talk and Other Stuff with Mike Magnotti on the NCW Life Channel. Winter weather has arrived in the Wenatchee Valley, and it's no fun to be stuck outside in the cold, and your dog or cat don't appreciate it either. Paws and Claws Veterinarian Hospital would like to remind you that your pet is susceptible to hypothermia and frostbite just like you. After going outside, wipe off their paws to prevent them from licking de-icer or antifreeze. Dr. Shauna Bayes and her staff care about your pets. If your pet needs medical attention, call 888-PAWS or find them on 4th and Nile in East Wenatchee. Thirty-nine minutes after the hour on this Tuesday edition of Wake Up in Angie Valley. I am Dan Coos. My guest today is a Renaissance man, if there ever was one here in the Wenatchee Valley. 
He does it all, <laughs> and he's only 29. Is that right? Or are you 30 yet? 30. Are you th when did you turn 30? August. Hey, happy yeah, birthday. Thank you. Happy yeah. What's it like to be 30? Uh, it's the beginning of the end, I think, right? Yeah. No, no, it's no. another chapter. No. Yeah. No, the 30s are great. <laughs> it's going to be a great decade for you, Alex A. Okay. Well, okay. I remember my 30th birthday. <laughs> I don't really. It's a blur to me now. Uh, last time I saw you, you were the, as the title of the commissioner of the beer garden. Right. The was, apple that the, was that the last time? That's the last here? time I saw you on the last show. Last time I was invited. Anyway, I I've see you on, yeah. on a regular basis. Uh -huh. <clears throat> um, Bear Garden is going to be bigger and better than ever now. I mean, it's it's. Good. I thought it was as big as it could be, and now it's going to be even yeah. bigger. Uh, they removed some of the rose bushes. They mm -hmm. love them. They moved them to different places, and uh, now we're yeah expanding a little bit, and we're adding in that final day. We were at ten days. And now we're going to just we're just going to be open up the whole time it's so, been a resounding yeah. success and people uh -huh. go it's change i don't like change and it's 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 beer it's in the park change. That's you know the, it's, yeah controlled change. yeah and it was it was methodically mm -hmm. done it was it was well planned out mm -hmm. And as you mentioned before, they took out a bunch of roses. These roses, there's two rose gardens there. Uh -huh. If you're not familiar with Memorial Park, the uh, rose, the the rose, the Appalachian rose garden mm -hmm. did not go anywhere. Yeah. It's still there. Uh -huh. But the roses that were in front of that, that kind of were in that half mm -hmm. moon shape. Uh, Most that's part of the there. city's park, yeah. and they were not in very good shape. They were yeah. not very well maintained. Yeah. They needed to go anyway. Mm -hmm. So now they ripped out, and that <laughs> actually makes the it'll make the beer garden bigger. But also, mm -hmm. more people because it'd be uh, pretty crowded around the entertainment stage, especially oh, on the yeah. Friday and Saturday yeah. nights. Yeah, so we, we'll move back from the entertainment stage. So it'll be more kind of general um, uh, areas for for families and such. But then the beer garden gets a little bit bigger too. So everybody, I got <laughs> no problem yeah. with that. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, it was big. It was, it was you know, it, it, I think you doubled the square footage last year, didn't you? Um, well, we, we changed. We were a little bit wider, so uh -huh. we try to we try to you know respect the the general seating area, and that's what it's about. But uh, we went a little bit wider, uh, but we had a record year. We doubled our sales and and uh, were more profitable than we've, we've been in the past. And we were getting to a point where. Uh, on you know Saturday nights, it was where it's just we I can't. Yeah. I don't know how we could be <clears throat> any busier. Mm -hmm. But each year we have that. I have that thought. Was, uh, how how can we possibly get bigger and, and busier than this? And then each year we we do better and better. So hopefully again we'll repeat this year. I did my part. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's, that's enough bear talk. <laughs> uh, we got a lot of things to talk about with Alex. Uh, the Chelan County PUD. Series of commercials, mm -hmm. Don't Be That Guy, just won some <laughs> regional marketing awards, uh -huh. which I think was pretty good. They got nominations yeah. and awards. You played a, a critical role in the creation of these things, didn't you? I played a part. Uh -huh. You played a part. Uh -huh. And uh, there's a bunch of ads, but we went ahead and just pulled the one because this is your chance to see Alex Haley oh, no. in tight red shorts. <laughs> Children, please turn away. <sighs> we meet every Saturday for some exercise and some conversation. Bring the baby, the dog. It's great to get outside. It's me, Jen, Seth, Susie. The trail isn't super wide, but it fits the four of us perfectly. No, I don't think it matters that we take up the whole trail. It's there for us, right? What are we supposed to do? Walk in a single file line? the road, later. Don't be those guys. Use just half the trail and keep it safe for everyone. A message from your Chelan County PUD Parks. So did you, <laughs> what? Uh, the outfit, uh -huh. please. Uh, yeah. Explain to our viewers what it was you were wearing. Uh, well, North 40 had written the scripts, uh -huh. uh, and they let me be in charge of my wardrobe, which was probably the last time that that will happen. Yeah. Um, but I had seen, I uh, they had a series of them. Josh Tarr played a, a biker, and he was in the full biker kit, yeah. and his was really funny. I was there when they were filming it. And, and you like, wouldn't even know it was Josh. No, he, yeah, yeah, you can't tell. And and uh, and Ashley did one, and they were and they were both both really funny. And I was like, well, the only way that I can top them is to just be louder and flashier. So, yeah, those are um, Eastmont High School red shorts, um, the Gryffindor circa 1978. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure where exactly. <laughs> I don't did, know if they're men or did women. Did you go into Pat's, your dad's closet, and steal some clothes? I mean, it might have been Adele's. It might, oh, yeah. Yeah, it could have been ladies or men's. I have no idea. Um, and uh, yeah, Gryffindor shirt. Yeah, so the the uh, just I guess be as ridiculous as possible. Yeah, if your goal was no. to look as nerdy as you possibly mm -hmm. could, yeah, uh, you you accomplished that. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah. So it's, it, that's the. <laughs> and then the fun the fun part is that they asked me to. Um, 
will be will do appearances as as yeah, those yeah. characters, and uh, I've had to do that character about five different times. Uh, that was the that was the, the second time I played mm -hmm. that character because there's the the standalone one. Um, yeah, we didn't want to expose keep, people to that too. Yeah, much, so. <laughs> but of all the ones that I I have to come back and keep doing, I have to keep putting on the rollerblades and the short <laughs> shorts. Um, but people don't know if they haven't seen the commercial when you're appearing at Pivus, they don't they just see a, a, a guy wearing a helmet walking around and they're hiding their kids. So. It's, that, that's the interesting. They don't know that I'm a character from a commercial. They just see a weird guy walking around. Um, to but me, it it's was fun. I'll, yeah. Any, anything to get a laugh. Yeah, well, yeah, and uh, you, you won. You uh, did that. You accomplished so. that yeah. uh, tenfold. Tell me on that one. Speaking of laugh, uh -huh. Laugh Productions. It's your yeah. own little company, L A P H uh -huh. Laugh Productions. Uh -huh. Um, you're now in the comedy booking business, yeah. and come January, uh, something new is coming to the America Pack. Yeah, we have. So we've done shows at the Pack before, um, and they've they've been successful. And I love working with with the Pack and what they what they uh, offer as far as the experience to to the audience and and the production value, and they make everything look great. Um, and this is kind of. A, a, you know, a couple of years in the making of doing all these shows, and then kind of creating a a, a, a bigger concept for it. Um, so the the show, the series is called Cold Winter Nights, and it's three shows, one a month for January, February, and March. And we we kind of after doing these for a couple of years and experimenting with different times, the winters we found is is one of the better times to do these comedy shows, and that's when people people show up, and and um, and so we'd we'd borrowed the. Uh, the staging format where we have everybody on the stage. So yeah, limits, I was going to ask it, about that. Yeah, <laughs> so it brings everybody, you know, the, if you've been to the, the, the pack, uh, it's a big, you know, amphitheater. Um, but when you put everybody on the stage, uh, you can, you, with a lot less people, you can create a lot more energy. And so that's what they do with the Hot August Night shows, and it's very unique, and it's very intimate. And then that's what we start doing with, with the comedy shows. So we essentially just flip everything. The, the, the comic will have their back to the, the original seats. The audience is in is on the stage. We have the bar on the stage, um, it, so it's a it's a really fun experience. And so since we lifted the the concept from Hot August Nights, we also stole the name, lovingly borrowed the name, uh, and and branding it as the Cold Winter Nights Comedy Show series. It's an homage. You yes. Feel it. Mm -hmm. think. Yeah. And people say, well, gee, it's it's on a stage, but this, the America Performing Arts Center stage is big. It's yeah. deep. It's very yeah. deep and it's wide and it's got plenty of room. Yeah. We yeah we fit. You can fit about two hundred people on the stage. And uh, and it's just yeah because you have the bar there you know with the uh, with the regular setup that you have to leave it and go in the lobby to to get a drink if you want to now you, you don't have to really even leave the show, so it's just a fun experience and, and people have responded really well to and comedians to like that. that yes they like it I mean they we we had uh, Nate Bargatze uh, a couple years ago and he of course everybody jokes about what you know there's seats back here why you know why are we why are we over here. Um, uh, but they pref they rather have a, a, a energetic show because if you took those same people and put them in the audience, it, the energy just dissipates and it wouldn't uh, be the same. same people experience. when they go to comedy shows, they like an intimate atmosphere. Mm -hmm. The comedian likes an intimate uh -huh. atmosphere. You want to sit down at a table where you can uh -huh. have your cocktail yep. there and that kind of stuff. And yeah. that's the that's what you want. You don't want to sit in a theater and watch a comedian up on stage. Yeah, it, it, it loses something. Yeah, uh, I mean, if you could, if you can pack the thing out, you can kind of recreate the energy. But it's still there's that uh, much a, a bigger gap between the audience now. The 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 audience is really in the lap of the comedian performing, and and uh, yeah, they so it's better for the comedians. It's better for the audience, I think. Uh, and we've we've sold them out in the past, which is great. I mean, that's that's always what we're going for is is to. Is to maximize the you know what we have available. So um, yeah, we're doing three shows. First one's on January 13th, and we have a comedian named Ivan Decker, and he made his uh, national television debut on Conan O'Brien, uh, November 27th. And we're going to show yeah. that clip here after we take a mm -hmm. quick uh, commercial break. Shows on uh, January, February, March. Before we do that, mm -hmm. real quickly. So you picked your dates, then you yeah. had to go about booking the comedians. Uh -huh. Now, do you have contacts? In the in the booking in, in the booking companies that handle comedians specifically, or did you start making phone calls and hope for the best? Uh, a little bit of both. I mean, it's it's a lot of comedians I'm either a fan of, I've listened to. Um, it's comedians I would drive to you know Seattle or Tacoma to go see. That's kind of my jumping off point, mm -hmm. and uh, or or comedians that I've listened to on podcasts, and and so it's kind of just I, I, a little bit of both of of trying to find these comedians. Sometimes I ask the comedians I brought before who some of their favorite comedians are. Um, and it really just started, you know, when I first started doing shows a few years ago, it was, I knew one comedian, 
and I just asked that comedian who else I should bring yeah. in. And it just kind of snowballed. Now I have these kind of connections and, and this, this growing network of, of, of talent to, to bring in, both from Seattle and also on a national level, which is what these shows are, are designed to be. Alex Haley is my guest from yeah. Laugh Productions. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to show a little video clip from his appearance on Conan. Not Alex's, but uh, Ivan's. Not yet. Uh, yeah, you're, you'll, be, you'll make Conan <laughs> eventually. Uh, you'll see about a two and a half minute clip from uh, Ivan Decker from his appearance on Conan and more with Alex Haley. When we come back, you're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley live here from Studio One in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Live channel. Lakeshaland Mailboxes find solutions in the best price for all your shipping needs, including UPS, FedEx, and the U.S. Postal Service. We offer a variety of services, including quality copies of all sizes, faxing, scanning, sending and receiving email, laminating, and notarizing. Enjoy browsing through our large selection of greeting cards. Lakeshaland Mailboxes supports our military, fire victims, and our community. See us at the Plaza in Chelan for all your holiday needs. Broadway's Cirque Dreams celebrates the 10th anniversary season of Cirque Dreams Holidays. Charm, sparkle, and talent by the sleigh load, says the New York Daily News. Over 20 of the world's best acts, 300 spectacular costumes, unforgettable music, and Broadway spectacle. Vegas meets family entertainment hails the Boston Globe of this season's must-see Cirque Dreams Holidays. December 26th at Town Toyota Center, locally sponsored by People's Bank. Get your tickets today at TownToyotaCenter.com. And we are back in Wake Up in Anchor Valley. I'm Dan Kuntz <laughs> alongside Alex Haley uh, from Laugh Productions. We got about a two and a half minute clip from uh, Ivan Decker mm -hmm. from his appearance on Conan. Um, how did this guy, before we play it, how did this guy land on your radar? Um, Besides this, being funny, he's right, very funny. Yeah. Uh, this was one of the times where I've kind of, uh, I had the show booked and actually had a cancellation and started reaching out to some of the, my community friends and you know, who would be in the same same league and said, well, this guy just had the Conan appearance. So that was just a couple of weeks ago. And so I, I looked him up and was like, yep, done. And so I, I reached out to them and, and uh, now he's coming. This is a pretty good clip, about yeah. two and a half minutes. This is uh, courtesy of our friends at uh, Conan O'Brien show on TBS. Check it out. This is the upper body that I prepared for television. <laughs> Not thrilled. I want huge muscles. I don't know why. I'm handling most public doors fine, <laughs> but the desire is there. The only problem is I know that if I want them, I have to go to the gym, which I can't do because I hate it. <laughs> because everybody else that goes is very good at it, and that's not fair. <laughs> like, I don't want to work out next to people who are amazing, right? Because then I just feel bad that I'm in their way. They all came with a plan and a tank top <laughs> and a protein shake and a note pad. What are you writing down? Everything was heavy, again. <laughs> also, like free weights, dumbbells, somehow they will know what weight they need at the beginning of the exercise. Like, hey, I need the 45s now. How do you know that already? <laughs> I don't know what weight I need until I try to pick up all the ones that are heavier than that one. <laughs> and can't, that's how I narrow it down. Start at one end, like, no, no, no. <laughs> or sometimes I'll do this move, pick one up, sit down, do one curl, be like, mmm, nope. <laughs> Not going the distance on that. <laughs> but even if you don't like the gym, people won't take that as an excuse to be out of shape. They're like, oh, you don't like the gym? Why don't you just run? You should try running. It's outside and it's free. <laughs> yeah, it's also the hardest thing in the world. <laughs> Have you tried running for longer than one adult minute? <laughs> it's very difficult. Like, running is the only activity I have ever done where the entire time you are doing it, your own brain is going, hey, stop this right now. <laughs> Nothing is chasing us, and we're not hungry. 
That's why I think people who are good at running will get really cocky about it. We'll try to bring it up all the time. What do you do? I'm a runner. <laughs> That's your job? No? I just want you to know that I do it a lot. <laughs> like, I would never classify myself as a runner. I'm still at jogger status. I'd like to upgrade. I don't know how it happens. I know that you don't want to be a jogger, though, because everything bad in the news always happens to a jogger. <laughs> Turn on the news, a tree fell over on a jogger today. <laughs> Any runners hurt? No. Uh, he's, great. he's funny. Yeah, he's great. He's funny. I'm you excited. got a producer, Caitlin, to laugh, and that's not an easy thing to do. Yeah. So that's Ivan Decker. He's first out of the, out yep. of the box January 15th. January 13th. 13th Saturday, Saturday, January 13th. Um, so we're selling all the shows together or separate, whatever kind of works for, for people. Um, we have tables and general mission seating. Uh, so we, we have a kind of cocktail tables like you talked about up, up in front. Mm -hmm. uh, those are a little bit more. Uh, and then we have the seating out in the, in the, uh, in the risers. And, uh, so tickets are $20 for, for general mission and it's $120 for a table of four. That's a great deal. Yeah. Get together with four. So it's a nice, mm -hmm. you're not sitting at a big table. It's no, like 50 just, yeah, people. Yeah, it's a little, little cocktail oh, table. Perfect. And yeah, and it, they, yeah. So uh, it's, it's great, I think, to, you know, if, if people want to, it, it's, it's cost effective, but if you want to spend a little bit more and get a different experience, you can, you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so Ivan Decker is the first one. He's January 13th. Uh, the next show uh, is going to be quick, quick turnaround, which is February 3rd. Uh, and that's a comedian named Jay Larson. Uh, he's from a podcast uh, called Crab Feast, if anybody listens to that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I haven't ran into that many people who do. Uh, but same thing. He's, he's been on national, national television. And, uh, and then March 16th, uh, we have kind of a regional uh, comedian that, named Kermit Apio. He's been to Wenatchee before, but I've never booked him for one of my shows. I've been trying to for mm -hmm. a long time. So uh, partly, you know, want to reach out to national headliners to bring them in to, to Wenatchee, uh, but also showcase the Pacific Northwest uh, when, when possible, because we do have a, a huge talent of, of comedians that are just in Seattle. I mean, I have uh, booked so many different shows only using Seattle comics, and, and nobody would know the difference because we have so much talent in this area. Is, is, Wenatchee, is Wenatchee Valley a hard hard sell to those national booking companies? So they go, Seattle? <laughs> Wenatchee? Uh, what are you Alex, what are you yeah, talking about? Where's uh, this town at? Is it's, it a hard it's, sell? Yeah, it, nobody's ever heard of us. That's fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, one, no one ever knows. But uh, the great thing is that we are actually are perfect for, for routing in the pack, and Matt at, at the pack has, has realized that we're two and a half hours from Spokane, and we're two and a half hours from Seattle. So uh, there's a lot of opportunities. So if they do a Saturday, you can do a Friday and Sunday show on either end. Uh, they can fly out of Spokane. They can fly out of Seattle e either way. Um, so we do have a unique opportunity there where we have these routing op opportunities where they can, you know, if they're in this, that part, we can, we can grab them um, at, on their way through. Um, but it really, it's you know people sometimes ask, well, how did you get that guy? And really, it comes that we paid them. You know, they yeah. they pay, we paid them to come. <laughs> if you meet their price, they'll show they, up. They pay, you know, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so, uh, because Wenatchee is very responsive to to these shows and they do well, we have the confidence to to book these these bigger and bigger acts. And and like I said, there's so much talent in Seattle, and I, I love working with those people. But to be able to kind of broaden the scope of what we can bring to Wenatchee, I think is that's the goal of these shows. And this is a, it should be pointed out, this is for mature audiences. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with cocktails being served, you've got to be at least 21 to show yep. up anyway. But uh, you have to be prepared for blue language, sure. for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, and it's, you know, we, we've had shows that, uh, you know, it's obviously, it's, it's, you know, it's approachable, it's, it, but they, they range in, in you know, I, it's a comedian on the stage, it's live comedy, I have no control over what they say. And sometimes when I get complaints about that, it's like, I don't, they don't give me a script of what they're mm -hmm. going to say. Uh, and nor do I want to to limit them. I want them to be the in charge of what they think is funny and, and read the audience. And in general, if, if people know what they're getting into, they're very responsive and, they, and there's not much that's necessarily off the table. You know, a lot of comedians ask that, what should I not talk about? And, and really, or, you know, Wenatchee is very responsive to, mm -hmm. to what, what we do. Mm -hmm. Laugh Productions, Alex Haley runs it, so you got that, and then you dive right into Beer Garden. What else is on your radar for 2018? Um, well, uh, this week, uh, doing the uh, old-time radio show okay. uh, at the Pack. Good. For, it's wonderful. Are you in it? I'm in it, yeah. Good. Yeah, I play uh, uh, four, four parts. I play Harry, uh, Harry Bailey, uh -huh. Sam Wainwright. They're doing uh, It's a Wonderful Life, by the way. Uh -huh. so, and the yeah. cool part is, during the big dance sequence, the stage of the Numerica Pack is going to open up, and everybody's going to fall into the pool. Yeah. And I, and I wear those red shorts because it's radio, so 
Uh, that's just for me. Oh, yeah. those, those red shorts should be inducted into the Emmy Hall of they'll Fame. Be in the, they'll be in the they museum really someday. Television all of it. Alex, always good to see you, my Thanks, friend. Dan. Uh, if I don't see you between now and uh, the rest of the week, have a happy holiday and a Merry Christmas. You as well. Say hi to Pat and Adele for me. Absolutely. All hi right. Pat and Adele. And now yeah. I have the same problem that Alex had. I had a last second cancellation tomorrow. So oh, in the next 15 seconds, I'm going to start making phone calls to see if I can book a guest for Wednesday. Until then, bye-bye. <laughs>